Hello friends, how are you doing? I'm Douglas and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing, we're going to be talking about a documentary about one of the biggest uh, stars in, in Brazil. She is an amazing, um, well that's Flora walking. Um, the, the, the sound you're listening to, that's Flora. Hey. Well. She, she's not in the mood to to film today but anyway so this um this tv host she's a tv host people adore everything that she does every project that she's in people watch people support her people buy her products she's a spokesperson for a lot of brands because brands are not afraid of using her image to promote their products or their services because they know how much people love her in Brazil. Her credibility uh, among Brazilians is something out of this world. And I was not expecting to get a documentary about her life so soon. I know I'm making all this uh, mystery about who I'm talking about, but you have seen the title of this video and uh, you already know that I'm talking about Xuxa. That's how we uh, say her name in Brazil. I know it's kind of difficult to pronounce it, but it's like Xuxa, Xuxa. Um, well, Xuxa is worldly famous. She had a TV program in Argentina. It was a huge success. People know her like, I've been to Argentina a few times and people, like she's a household name, you know? But the reason why I chose to talk about this documentary, I watch a lot of documentaries, I, I love it. But the reason why I chose to talk about this documentary is much deeper. I felt so related and so um, connected to, to her life story. I could see myself going through the same situations that she had, that she um, was forced, she was forced to go through in life. And I have been through the same situations and it was very relatable, it was absolutely relatable for me. I am talking to you guys and I'm expressing my feelings and my opinions about this documentary as a viewer. I'm not an expert when it comes to knowing all the details of her life and her career and her journey. But the thing is, she is such a good person. She's such a kind person um, that, that everyone, everyone in this country loves her, loves her, respects her. And it is clear that the amount of appreciation that Brazilians have for her. Unfortunately, I didn't have uh, too much contact with her, with her, um, I mean, TV shows, music. She's not just a TV host. She was uh, a singer as well. She made uh, music for children, but you know, nostalgic adults right now, they, they still sing those songs, but she had many records made she she made a lot of records she made a lot of movies she had countless tv shows in a lot of tv channels in, in different tv channels in brazil we have um four main tv channels i would say i i don't watch too much tv actually i don't watch tv at all and, but I know this because at that time, I was really young when she was always on TV. I was really young and um, the only thing we had was a TV in the living room. We didn't have the internet. Uh, the internet was something for rich people at that time, or at least someone with um, better resources that my family could provide for us um, and this is not a complaint this is just the reality um, this is just 
how my life was at that time when I was uh, 10, 11, um, when I was, you know, a teenager, a young, very young teenager. So the only source of entertainment we had was watching TV, especially in the morning, because in the afternoon we had to go to school and then come back home. So her TV shows were always in the morning because the target audience were kids, you know, kids and teenagers. And I was one of them. But the thing is, I wasn't allowed to, to watch. I was not allowed to watch anything from Shusha because my parents were very religious. I mean, my mother, she just, she, she had just, I remember like perfectly clear, she had just converted herself to this religion. Anyway, so my mother used to go to church and in church, So my mother used to go to church and during the sermons, the the, pre, the priests, the, the pastors, they call themselves pastors, they used to say that parents shouldn't let their kids watch her TV shows, parents shouldn't let us uh, buy her DVDs or CDs or listen to her, her songs. Um, they used to say a lot of fake news. They used to spread they used to spread a lot of fake news about her. This at one point got so um, offensive and so um, extreme because I respect conservatives. I respect every position that you might have, a political position that you might have. I do respect, but I think extremes, and that's my opinion, it's not good to stay on the extreme side of any ideology, of any political views that you might have, it's not a good option. Back to the documentary and to explaining why I didn't have the opportunity to get to know Shusha when I was younger, it was mainly because my, my mother used to, my mother and my father and, and, you know, everybody, we were inside, we were among a lot of conservatives and, and um, a lot of people who were spreading all this fake news about um, Shusha selling her soul to the devil so we shouldn't consume her products and her, um, and her TV shows and, and watch her on TV, we shouldn't do that because she, she, she made a pact with the devil. So that's why I didn't grow up watching Shusha. I didn't grow up listening to her songs. But well, I knew I was different from a very young age. I knew that there was something different with me from a very young age. And I guess that's the, um, the case of many, of many, people from my community. She represented more than she knows. Well, I guess right now she knows that she's a LGBTQ plus icon. She knows that. She even has this um, TV show on, uh, um, I don't want to say the wrong, um, the wrong name. Um, it is on Paramount Plus. It's either Paramount Plus or HBO Max. It is a drag contest, like RuPaul's Drag Race. And it's amazing. The production is awesome. She was able to show how much she was a, a supporter of our community and our struggles. Especially the, the people from my community, from my community who are suffering and living on the streets and and being marginalized. The first part that I want to talk about is obviously the, um, the part where she talks about how hard it was for, for her to start at such a young age and having to deal with a lot of um, personal issues, people trying to exploit her, like her manager. Her manager was actually in one of the episodes and they were like 
um, they had this face off and uh, it was one of the highlights of this documentary. I don't know why she she decided to participate because everything that people thought about her and I mean Marlene, the, the manager, everything that people thought about her became, you know, a reality because she showed people that we heard from the horse's mouth, you know? I don't know why she accepted the invitation to participate in this documentary. I don't believe it was for exposure because she never wanted exposure for herself. The, the thing about her is that she wants to, she likes to make money with other people's image. She likes to use other people's image to make money, not hers. But anyway, Shusha was there trying to get some answers and, and maybe a, a, um, you know, I'm sorry, like an apology, but a sincere and honest apology. But she didn't get that, and it was very sad to see that she didn't get the apology that she was looking for. Because it was really clear that she wanted an apology. Everything that this woman made her go through was unnecessary, unacceptable, and abusive. Extremely abusive. So, of course, she was expecting an apology. But, well... Sometimes we don't get that. We don't get to have um, closures. Sometimes things happened the way that they happened and people were not sorry for that uh, back then. And they're still not sorry in the present moment. And we are the ones responsible to let these feelings go and, and, and cure and heal this trauma, you know? The, the, this job is... Um, something that we have to to work inside ourselves we have to do this job and i'm pretty sure that shusha has done that but it's clear that she wanted an apology but she didn't get that also another highlight and when i say highlights i am referring to the parts that got my attention the most and at times left me speechless and we're going to get to that in a minute the, the other highlight of this documentary was Shusha meeting the boy that were in a movie with her. In this documentary, she meets the guy for uh, the first time in a long time. I don't know, but maybe since the time that they, they made the movie, I don't know if this information is true, but to me, it seems like um, they had no contact whatsoever. Uh, well, Marlene, the manager, the... the um, you know, um, I'm not gonna even um, put any adjectives because I guess you can guess what I'm thinking about this woman. But well, um, Shusha mentioned that they um, they they were meeting they were meeting each other for the first time in 19 years. They worked together for 19 years, and they spent. 19 years apart without like any kind of contact no phone calls no texts no no nothing but the boy from the movie i guess that she she had no contact but because uh it was just something that she was uh trying to do in the beginning of her career uh she was modeling she started as a model and uh, like, this movie didn't mean anything to her, you know? Or, like, thinking big picture. It was just one of those things that you think nobody go is going to see ever. And, well, maybe that's just my perception. <clears throat> well, I had to take a sip because now we're getting to the part of the... Um, this whole video that is um, triggering for me and I am going to talk about um, sexual abuse and if it triggers you I advise you to stop the video right here and go watch something else um, but 
the the thing about this documentary that made me really emotional and um made me feel so related um to her story to her life story and also very sad was when she talked about her experiences with being sexually abused it didn't happen once it happened multiple times and as as a person who has gone through the same thing i understood and i could see myself um th that's flora i'm talking about something serious and she's playing with her uh teddy bear she was able to explain how survivors feel in a way that i have never seen anybody else explaining it was so real it was so intense when i heard her speaking about this issue i felt like um well i know the struggle that you went through because i went through the same thing but we all process these traumas these situations in different ways the way that we understand this this issue is the same i was watching the documentary with my partner and i was crying because like I said, it was a trigger for me, even though I'm much better today, much, much better. Um, I have worked on uh, myself, on these traumas, so I'm, I'm fine. But even though I'm fine, it is still a trigger for me. And only some people, like a handful of, of people in my life know about this, and I, and I open up. Um, from time to time when I feel like talking um, and, and then he saw me crying and he knew why because he knows everything so he already knows how to act when I get triggered by um, these memories and these memories started to come to my mind when I was listening to her talking about her abuse um, and well, it was so liberating, in a sense, to see a person that has reached a level of success that not only, I, I don't know in, like, numbers, but, you know, like, 0.0003% of the population will, will ever be able to get. Like, you know, she got that famous. She is, like, Michael Jackson kind of famous. Um... Actually, Michael Jackson was the, the person who took Shusha to the US. Um, he recommended her to this TV channel. They were really good friends. But anyway, uh, back to the topic. I was um, really touched, really emotional, and it was really liberating for me to see someone talking about something that I went through the way that she talked about, you know? And, and also I could see that the trauma that she went through, the abuses that she went through, they reflected upon all her life, all her relationships. The relationship with the manager, her boyfriends. She was madly in love for Ayrton Senna, which was a driver, a Formula One driver um racer is it racer or driver i don't know but um she let marlene meddle in her relationship and it didn't work and you know the 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 cycle of abuse continued and and it was like um everything that that happened if you analyze from, from a um, distance, from another perspective, you're going to see that it all takes you back to the, the, the trauma that she went through. She was not able to express herself, um, talk to anyone from her family about her abuses. She just had to endure. She was afraid of telling anyone, especially her father, who was from the military. And, and I relate to that. I was really afraid of telling people. 
And you'll know her first relationship was with a guy that didn't value her at all. He died this year, which was the um, very famous, like extremely famous soccer player Pelé. Um, everybody knows him. Um, he was a legend. Uh, well, I don't watch soccer, so I don't really get that. But, you know, people called him the, the king. So, well, um, he was her first man. And it was a very, very um, horrible decision. It was such a terrible decision. He didn't value her. He mistreated her in a lot of ways. So she went through a lot of abuses, like physical abuse, uh, sexual abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse. Like she did a, a lot of things that she didn't want to do when it comes to, you know, her job. She was forced to do a lot of things that she didn't want to do. She had no choice but to do them. And well, she suffered from all the pressures and all the um, beauty standards of that period of time. People were very racist. Uh, <laughs> most people were like openly racists, uh, sexists, and the TV um, was dominated. It was dominated by men. It was run by men. Uh, men ran the TV. Uh, the TV channels in Brazil and and I, I guess around the world She was seen as a product not as a person and that had an effect upon her life that it is um, Unmeasurable we cannot measure the the amount of damage that all this all this stuff caused in her brain in her life and how things might have turned out differently for her if these things didn't happen but we are very happy to see that she is in a place in her life right now that she is um, happy she is uh, actually satisfied she doesn't use the word happy like like me that's why I say I relate to her so much because I don't use the word happy happy or happiness or you know I, I use the word satisfied so she's satisfied um, she has her boyfriend she has her life, she, she has, you know, uh, accomplished everything that she um, wanted as far as, you know, uh, her career goes. She, she does only what she wants to do. No one is telling her what to do. She's a businesswoman now. I think you can find this documentary to watch in a streaming service in your country. In my country, it is... Um, the streaming service from you know the TV channel that she works for but I guess in your country is going to be another uh, streaming service but you just google it you know there's a bird's nest like next to my window anyway so just google Shusha documentary the, the documentary and you're gonna find it, I'm pretty sure. It is worth the watch. And um, I, I wanted to have this conversation with you. I wanted to, to talk to you about this, um, uh, about this documentary because uh, it had uh, a lot of personal stuff that I wanted to share with you guys. And I found this opportunity through this documentary because I saw myself in a lot of these situations that I that I've described to you from the documentary, when I talked about um, growing up really fast, uh, having religious parents with you know ridiculous and um, beliefs that were like nonsense beliefs. Um, I couldn't even listen to to her songs. Or watch a movie from her and she was on TV every Sunday I couldn't watch but you know when I became an adult I started to watch her TV shows and then I catch up with uh, her work 
especially right now that I, I live by myself and, you know, I pay my own bills. Um, but yeah, I wanted to um, be, you know, m more personal and, 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 you know, get a little closer to you guys and, and also talk about this uh, documentary that was really, uh, I, I would describe this documentary life-changing for me life-changing because it made me think about my life and my own experiences and how I let other people at times, not always, but at times, how I let other people decide for me. And I felt uh, compelled to do things that I didn't have to do at all. And how that inner child, even though you, you overcome stuff, that inner child, every time you talk about the trauma, that inner child of mine comes out. So I, I could reflect upon a lot of things of my life. So yes, this is a recommendation, a review, a, you know, casual conversation. So thank you for watching this video. I am going to see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Um, don't forget to uh, watch the reaction videos of the Drag Race of Brazil that started this week. The first um, reaction is out, so make sure that you see that. And I'm going to see you next time. Bye-bye.